the topic of uh, today's lecture is pericyclic reactions in biological systems and uh, you know pericyclic reactions the, so far you have studied most of those reactions are carried out in labs but uh, there are so many of these reactions uh, which occur in biological systems so there are so many reactions but uh, we will be uh, you know dealing with some uh, particular reactions which are quite famous among them is the pericyclic reactions which are used in the cold light production by fireflies so <clears throat> uh, in this topic we'll be dealing uh, with three uh, biological pericyclic reactions one is the cold light uh, cold light production by fireflies which is a very interesting topic in itself second will be the vitamin d formation in the presence of sunlight and third will be the biological cycloaddition reactions which lead to mutations and which finally lead to uh, skin cancer so our uh, you know focus will be on these three types of pericyclic reactions there are other pericyclic reactions which occur in biosystems but we'll be dealing with these three mostly so <clears throat> we'll start with this cold light production by fireflies uh, actually uh, the cold light production by fireflies is is a process uh, which is known as bioluminescence, which occurs in many uh, living organisms, including fireflies. So, bioluminescence, by definition, is an uh, is a process, an enchanting process. It looks good because it leads to the you know production of light. The organism produces light, which looks quite enchanting. It's an enchanting process in which living organisms convert chemical energy. In this process, chemical energy is uh, released uh, in various biological systems. Chemical energy is released in the form of uh, uh, light. So these organisms convert chemical energy into light energy. So this is known as bioluminescence. So this bioluminescence phenomena occurs in fireflies. So the light uh, which uh, is emitted by these fireflies is actually it results from the oxidation of an organic substrate which is known as luciferin. Uh, this uh, substrate is present in these fireflies in the stomach of these fireflies actually. So uh, this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme which is known as luciferase. This enzyme is known as luciferase. This luciferase enzyme acts on luciferin and it converts the, the chemical energy into light energy. So in nature, there is an amazing uh, diversity of organisms that emit light, including bacteria, fungi, mollusks, fishes, and insects. So... <clears throat> But uh, in all of these uh, organisms, the mechanism of light production uh, to a large extent resembles the biochemistries involved is much more similar. So while the specific biochemistries of bioluminescence are diverse, all include an enzyme-mediated reaction. So all of these, uh, you know, um, all of these organisms, they involve a reaction which is catalyzed by an enzyme. And this reaction is between molecular oxygen. This reaction occurs between molecular oxygen and an organic substrate. And in many of these uh, organisms, the organic substrate is mostly luciferin. So it is likely to that all, uh, you know, bioluminescence process Processes involve the formation and breakdown of a four-membered ring, uh, which is peroxide or a linear hydroperoxide. So you will see in this case, it's, uh, there is a four-membered four ring formation. And uh, that uh, breakage of that ring formation actually leads to the production of light. So fireflies emit light as a result of 
a retro 2 plus 2 uh, cyclo addition reaction now here is the pericyclic touch to this topic so in these microorganisms a retro 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction occurs retro means reverse of cyclo uh, addition it means uh, the opening of the ring cyclo addition uh, leads to the formation of a ring retro means it is the opening of the ring and it's a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction and you uh, might be knowing that 2 plus 2 cyclo addition is photochemically induced it's uh, thermally induced 2 plus 2 reactions are symmetry forbidden they do not occur but photochemical induced 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reactions they do occur so fireflies have an uh, enzyme which is known as luciferase that catalyzes the reaction between luciferin ATP and molecular oxygen and forms a compound with an unstable four membered ring so this is the whole process so they have an enzyme which is known as luciferase that luciferase catalyzes the reaction between luciferin which is the organic substrate it is a protein ATP is the universal you know currency of uh, you know energy for um, biosystems for all uh, um, organisms the light uh, you know the energy is you know uh, liberated from ATP ATP provides uh, you know energy to the uh, living organisms so is the case here and molecular oxygen that is present in air and uh, this reaction forms an unstable four membered ring we'll see in the next slide the whole reaction so when this four membered ring it breaks when it breaks an electron in oxyluciferin this oxyluciferin is formed by the reaction of luciferin with oxygen this uh, you know when this four membered ring breaks an electron in oxyluciferin it is promoted to the and to an excited state because suprafacial overlap can occur only under photochemical conditions so for this uh, ring to break it has to involve suprafacial uh, you know overlap but suprafacial overlap in a 2 plus 2 cyclo retro cyclo addition you know it occurs under photochemical conditions so uh, you know uh, an electron in uh, oxyluciferin it is promoted to the excited state so when it is pr pr promoted to the excited state now suprafacial overlap can occur and this ring breakage uh, uh, will happen so when the electron in the excited state when the electron in the excited state when it, when it drops down to the ground state a photon of light is released so this is the this is where this pho photon this uh, actually this light comes from it comes from actually the you know the excited state oxyluciferin when it goes to the ground state it uh, loses this excess energy in the form of a photon which is released so this is the whole uh, chemical reaction which is involved in the light production by these um, you know uh, these fireflies this is a luciferin it's part of actually it's a, a big protein it's a part of that big protein so the uh, the uh, you know uh, the area of interest for this molecule will be this part because this reaction will occur here it will occur at this part so this luciferin it uh, reacts with ADP in presence of this catalyst which is luciferase right so it leads to the formation of this molecule C double bond or C double bond O A M P so ATP is broken into AMP so you can write here in this step ATP is broken into AMP this AMP gets uh, bonded to this molecule this uh, oxygen of this it gets bound to this AMP plus twice inorganic phosphate it release right so this setup involves step 2 it involves proton abstraction by a biological base so this biological base is usually some amino acid there is NH2 group and this NH2 group can easily abstract this proton this proton here it is abstracted so this proton it leads to formation this is a um, this is a carbonyl as you can see here there is negative charge here 
So step three involves the reaction between this molecule, between this molecule and molecular oxygen, O2, which comes from, you know, atmosphere. So uh, this goes here, it attacks here and this lone pair of electron, it attacks here and this double bond, it goes here on this oxygen, right? So when this step occurs, you, uh, you know, uh, we get this compound and this compound, you know, intramolecular uh, uh, reaction occurs here. This lone pair of electron on oxygen, it attacks this carbonyl. This carbonyl being, this carbonyl, this carbonyl carbon, it is being positively polarized. It is positively polarized, right? So it can be easily attacked by oxygen. So it's a nucleophilic sort of addition reaction. So actually it's a nucleophilic, uh, you know, substitution because this AMP will be, you know, eliminated from this. So here you can see this four-membered ring is formed here. This is our, uh, you know, ring of interest. So this four-membered ring, uh, you know, uh, when it is formed in this setup now, step four, which is called, uh, it actually involves the formation of a four-membered unstable ring because it eliminates this uh, this AMP O AMP is released in this step actually in this step. So an unstable uh, you know uh, four-membered ring is formed in this compound. It's very unstable, right? So ju uh, during this step, <clears throat> this is oxaluciferin. This oxaluciferin, if it has to undergo this, uh, you know, um, uh, re retro cycloaddition reaction, an electron is promoted from ground state to the excited state, means this oxaluciferin is now in an excited state. This one. So it's in an excited state. So when it's in excited state, now superficial 2 plus 2 reverse cycloaddition reaction can easily occur. So when that occurs, I have shown here, I have shown here the electron movement, how this occurs. These two electrons go here and it leads to the elimination of CO2 minus CO2 in this step, which is here. So it this molecule now comes to the ground state and this excess energy is released in the form of this light. So this is your cold light. So oxaluciferin loses excess energy in the form of light. So this is the whole chemical reaction involved in the cold light production by fireflies. But there are some points to be, you know, noted down here. Well, so this proton is abstracted by, you know, a basic side chain amino acid, which is present in any protein. Uh, and visible light emission results from the rapid loss of energy of the excited state oxaluciferin, which I have already told you. So it loses this excess energy in the form of light um, uh, via a process which is known as fluorescence. This process, this uh, excess energy uh, liberation, this uh, release of energy, excess energy in the form of light is known as fluorescence pathway. And uh, it has been seen that, uh, you know, this reaction uh, has in fact, this step, oxaluciferin, conversion of oxaluciferin into its ground state and uh, release of energy. It has a very high quantum yield, uh, which you are going to study in photochemistry. Uh, it's uh, roughly, uh, you can say that how many quanta uh, photons are released per reacted molecule. That is the quantum yield. And the quantum yield of this process is uh, nearly 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, which is quite good which reflects, uh, you know, not only the efficient catalytic machinery which is involved, but also it, you know, a highly favorable environment that prevents the electronically excited state, uh, electronically excited state energy loss by non-radiative pathways. This excess energy, which is, uh, you know, which this molecule oxaluciferin, oxaluciferin, it could have, 
यू नो लॉस दिस एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ नॉन रेडियो ट्यूब पाथवेज बट इट प्रेफर्स टू लूज दिस एनर्जी थ्रू रेडियो ट्यूब पाथवेज विच इज एंड विच इज क्वाइट एफिशेंट so if it had uh, you know um, lost this energy through non radiative pathways it leads to the heating of the system but uh, you know firefly is a living organism it cannot afford to you know uh, it it cannot afford that this energy be released uh, through a, a non radiative pathway it releases this energy through a radiative path that's why it's known as the cold light and in fact this insect has inspired scientists to design led bulbs and you know how much uh, efficient led bulbs usually are they are much more efficient in light production and there is less heating involved and um, i would urge you people to uh, watch a clip on these fireflies which is very relevant to this topic is part of us the blinking lights of fireflies or of lightning bugs are summer's gifts to people everywhere but their gleaming display is actually a complex language of light that still puzzles scientists so little is known about biology of fireflies what on earth are they doing out there Why should some little beetles with a brain smaller than the head of a pin be wired to do these things in such a complex fashion? What we do know is that fireflies are beetles, and they produce their own light to communicate with each other and with predators. The firefly glow is a chemical reaction triggered by oxygen in the firefly's light organ. The fire is a cold light that's nearly 100% efficient because unlike our light bulbs, none of the energy is wasted on heat. Chemicals in fireflies taste awful and the gleam signals predators to stay away. At the University of Florida Gainesville, Mark Branham So this was all about uh, you know for cold light production by fireflies which uh, uh, according to the scientists is a 100% you know efficient uh, means it uh, converts chemical energy 100% into light energy with no loss of energy in the form of heat so we have we have to we have to learn a lot from these fireflies second reaction is pericyclic reaction is the vitamin d formation this vitamin d is also called as the sunshine uh, sunshine vitamin Uh, this is another biological process actually vitamin d3 formation involves uh, an electrocyclic reaction and a sigma tropic rearrangement so two reactions occur back to back in vitamin d formation one is an electrocyclic reaction and another is a sigma tropic rearrangement actually the reaction starts from this 7 dihydro cholesterol which is a steroid which is found in skin and uh, Uh, it is converted into vitamin D3 by two pericyclic processes we will see these two processes what are these two processes you know the first process is an electrocyclic reaction that opens one of the six membered uh, rings in the starting reactant to form pro vitamin D3 the first process is an electrocyclic process as you can see here it's an electrocyclic process here in electrocyclic process you know a diene uh, you know uh, a diene is converted into a cyclic uh, uh, a polyene is converted into a cyclic compound or its reverse uh, reaction means a cyclic compound is uh, uh, converted back to it is polyene so electrocyclic reactions are reversible reactions so both reactions are electrocyclic so uh, the moment of electrons is shown here you can see it clearly how this occurs you know you have a double bond here 
a double bond gets generated here right and a double bond comes here a double bond comes here and a double bond will come here so this is an electrocyclic process you have read these electrocyclic processes this is the seven dihydrocholesterol which is found in sikin or which you know uh, is given in the uh, in the form of food so uh, this is a hexatriene and this is a hexadiene and this is the first step this is the first pericyclic process which occurs second pericyclic process first pericyclic process leads to the formation of pro vitamin d3 this pro vitamin d3 undergoes a 1 comma 7 sigma tropic rearrangement i have marked here how it is 1 comma 7 you know i have marked this numbering system here it's a 1 comma 7 sigma tropic rearrangement and uh, this hydrogen here it's uh, it shifts from position 1 to position 7 so after 1 comma 7 sigma tropic rearrangement it leads to the formation of this compound which is actually the vitamin d3 so it's a it's a actually an isomeric hexatriene so two reactions are involved one is an electrocyclic reaction and this electrocyclic reaction you must note down this electrocyclic reaction means which is the first reaction this uh, reaction occurs under photochemical conditions the pro vitamin d3 then undergoes a seven, 1 comma 7 sigma tropic rearrangement to form vitamin d3 okay the sigma tropic rearrangement occurs under thermal condition so electrocyclic reaction occurs under photochemical condition and the sigma tropic rearrangement 1 comma 7 sigma tropic rearrangement occurs under thermal conditions and is a slower process than the electrocyclic reaction so that the vitamin d3 continues to be synthesized for several days after exposure to light so exposure to light is very critical that's why you know these uh, um, you know vitamin d3 it's formed only in the presence of light because the first process of vitamin d3 formation involves an electrocyclic reaction which is photochemically induced so vitamin d3 is actually not the active form of the vitamin d so the active form actually requires two successive hydroxylations means incorporation of oh groups uh, of vitamin d3 and uh, you know one of these uh, hydroxylations occur occurs in liver and the second hydroxylation it occurs in kidneys so vitamin d3 uh, you know it's also called as coal calciferol it controls the calcification of bones by increasing intestinal absorption of calcium so in the absence of this vitamin calcium absorption falls sharply to about 10 percent and you know a deficiency of vitamin d3 it can lead to poor bone growth and uh, you know vitamin d3 is not present in foods so rather foods contain the precursor of vitamin d3 called as dehydro 7 dehydro cholesterol from where we started this reaction which is converted into vitamin d3 and then active forms by sunlight that's why it's also called as the sunshine vitamin so too much vitamin uh, d uh, d is also harmful as it can cause the calcification of soft tissues so this is about you know vitamin d formation third uh, pericyclic biological pericyclic reaction is the dna mutation so you know that uv light causes skin cancer exposure excess exposure to uv light it can cause skin cancer and one of uh, you know one cause of skin cancer is the formation of thymine dimers and you know at any point in dna where there are two adjacent thymine residues a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction can occur which can result in the formation of a thymine dimer and you know that a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition it only occurs under photochemical conditions so this reaction has to occur under uv light it cannot occur under you know under thermal conditions so the reaction takes place only in the uh, you know presence of uv light so these are two thymine derivatives here uh, thymine residues uh, rather so uh, you know two adjacent thymine residues on dna if they happen to be adjacent and uh, you know there is an exposure to light uh, excess exposure to light you know you have a double bond here 
you have a double bond here and you have a double bond here you know it's similar to this reaction a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction can occur and you know this reaction occurs only under uh, photochemical conditions because thermally induced 2 plus 2 cyclo addition is not allowed so this 2 plus 2 cyclo addition reaction it is you know um, it, uh, it occurs uh, suprafacial pathway it occurs uh, suprafacial overlap and this suprafacial overlap can occur and it can lead to the formation of this dimer and uh, you know when this dimer occurs uh, which is known as the thymine dimer it can cause uh, you know uh, severe interference in the structural integrity of dna of the cells so any modification in the dna it uh, can be disastrous for uh, for the organism so modified dna means it will now form uh, deformed proteins it can lead to different diseases but fortunately human beings are you know uh, they are protected by certain enzymes which are known as you know they uh, they correct these uh, you know mutations in the dna they are always present there so uh, they uh, mostly those enzymes are involved in the corrections of these dna what they do they uh, they convert this dimer back into the uh, you know thymine residues so uh, in certain uh, organisms those uh, enzymes are not present and in uh, in such organisms you know such mutations can uh, really lead to you know skin cancer and many other genetic disorders so this is the third uh, uh, you know biological pericyclic reaction and i think with this uh, we have completed the you know second part of the pericyclic reactions uh, and we will be starting now with uh, uh, photochemistry. Uh, I will be back with the next topic. Uh, until then, goodbye. Take care.